Most modern email gateway filtering solutions have evolved to be able to open and run email attachments before delivering them to a user's inbox. To identify if the attachment is going to do anything suspicious or malicious. But those same advanced checks aren't carried out on basic tools or webmail accounts like Gmail, Hotmail or Yahoo. Users need to be extra vigilant when opening emails from untrusted or unknown senders, especially when they contain attachments. To demonstrate how easy it can be for bad actors to trick you into running malware on your machine, I'm going to use some freely available tools that don't cost any money to use and only a small amount of time to set up. The purpose of this is not to show you how to be a bad actor, but instead to demonstrate how easily you can be tricked so you can be more aware of your actions. To set up the demonstration, I'm going to create an executable package that will create a connection to this attacker's machine. Once run, it will open a backdoor that allows a bad actor to remotely view your files, stored passwords, and even a view of your live screen. Here you can see I'm accessing QuasarRat on github.com. It is a free open source remote administration tool for Windows. There are some screenshots down here which show what it looks like in action, but I'm gonna demonstrate in a second, so no need to look at those. To be able to access the malware, you just need to download this zip file. There is a little bit of setup required. It's not that difficult though, and anyone with a little bit of time would be able to do it. Now to set up the reverse connection, I first need to know the IP address of the machine I'm on, 192.168.1.175 in this instance. If I was doing this remotely, it would be a public IP address. Because I'm doing it on some servers within my own environment, it's gonna be an internal IP. But when I use the builder here, I can actually create a connection into that IP address. I'm going to use port 443 because that's open on most systems and will slip beneath the radar. The package will allow you to choose where the system is installed, what the installer file is called, and if we're gonna run the file on startup, what the startup program is. We can also change the assembly information and make it look like a legitimate file by adding in some other potential data. We can also change the icon. This is just an example of a PDF icon I downloaded from the internet. We're going to enable keyboard login so we can show you that in action. And now we're going to build the client. I'm just going to save it here on the desktop. I'm going to rename it to terms.exe. That will make sense in a couple of minutes. There it's built the file. Just one other thing I need to do here on Quasar Rat to make it ready is to enable the listener. I need to turn it on so it's able to listen on that port to be able to receive the connection once we initiate it on the victim's machine. And just to show you on the desktop here, there is my terms exe file disguised as a PDF. Now I'm gonna to go to the second machine here. I'm gonna open up Kali Linux. And I'm gonna show you a second tool that I'm gonna use as part of this attack. This is called Bob the Smuggler. This is also on GitHub, also available to anybody for free. As it says here, it's a tool that leverages HTML smuggling attacks to allow you to create HTML files with embedded payloads. Further down this GitHub page, past the nice AI generated image of Bob, you will see a flowchart where it shows you how it does what it does in action. So it takes the executable file, it compresses it and puts it inside a zip file. It uses steganography to be able to mask the true intention of the file. It then uses a HTML attachment to serve as the delivery vehicle for the malware. And at the end of it, we're going to be left with a HTML file ready for delivery. So let's have a look at this in action. Uh, so here we can see that it uses Python to run. I'm going to use the terms.exe file, which we created a second ago. Just realize there's a typo there. Let's make that capital. Password I'm going to add is 123456. This can be anything, obviously. I'm going to create OneDrive.html at the end of it as the output file. Terms.zip is the, going to be the container for the malware. And I'm just going to use the OneDrive download template that's included with Bob the Smuggler. Let's just run this, and there we'll see that it's created it. If I just have a look in the folder there, you can see we've got OneDrive.html as the file. And if I just open that file up in Firefox, there's the example HTML file, and there we can see it's downloaded terms.zip. So without me clicking anything, it's downloaded the zip file. So that just proves that the payload works. Now we need to deliver this to an end user. I've just found here an example of a genuine email that was sent to me from Microsoft about some service agreement changes. I'm actually just gonna forward this on and use this as part of the law. I'm gonna send it here from a demo account. I'm gonna send it to a second demo account that I've got. 
Um, I'm just going to change the text here. So this is Microsoft's default text. I'm just going to change the ability to access these this new terms agreement from a website. And I'm going to say uh, then you can access it through the attached file. All I need to do now is attach the OneDrive.html file and then send. And now we need to go to the third machine in this, which is the end user. Here you can see the message that's been sent. So here's the attachment. Here you can see the text that I changed and added. And we're just going to open up the HTML file. Here you can see now it's downloading. Okay, I'm just going to open the file up. And there we can see it's downloaded the terms.zip file just like we wanted. When we open this up, there's the terms uh, executable file. Uh, the password, obviously one, two, three, four, five, six. We'd socially engineer to give the user this password as part of the law. Uh, what I'm going to do before I actually execute this is just bring across the attacker's machine here and just set this up to listen. I'll just resize it. You can see both screens at the same time. Let's run this executable. And you can see there on the attacker's machine, I've now got a connection into this other victim's machine. There's a different IP address. And now we've got remote access to this user's machine. We can do a whole host of interesting things. We can have a look at the files on the user's machine. So you see, so here in the C drive, I can access this user's folder and go into downloads. I can see the files that we've got in there, including some other things that I've downloaded. Um, I can obviously access the documents, I can access the desktop, I can do anything the user can do from this machine. And I also from here have the ability to upload files too. So it's not just a case of downloading whatever I want to from the machine, I can also upload my own files. I can access the startup manager, I can access registry editors, I can run, run remote shells on this machine. I can have a look at any cached passwords. Now in this demo environment, I haven't got anything saved at the moment, but this is where Anything stored in a browser or stored in a machine would be accessible to the bad actor. I can access a remote desktop session. So this will give me a view of what the user's doing. So you'll see here, flicking back to the victim's machine, I'm just gonna, let's go to uh, facebook.com. And you can see an exact mirror view of what the user's doing on the bad actor's machine. I can do things like elevate privileges. We can send the user a message if we wanted to. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this as a bad actor, but maybe you can send them something just to let them know that we're watching. You can see how quickly there that appeared on the victim's machine. We can also access a key logger. So obviously we enabled this as part of the build. Let's just refresh here and pull out the latest logs. And here you can see whatever it is that the user types on the machine is presented back. Now you've seen how easy it is for bad actors to create these attacks, you can be more aware next time you open your emails. Never open attachments from untrusted senders. Pay particular attention to sender fields to make sure the sender really is trusted and not being impersonated. And if you aren't expecting an attachment, don't open it just to check. If you notice network slowness or odd different behaviours on your machine, don't ignore it. Run anti-malware checks like malware bytes to look for known bad code and programs. By understanding how these attacks work, you can put yourself in the attacker's mindset and better protect yourself.